Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now this is part two of the speaker setup video, um, which includes no setting up of speakers whatsoever. Um, so we're not quite about that. We're probably going to part three unless I think of something else to, uh, to talk through with it. But I think basically we've done room acoustics, uh, so understanding your room. The next thing is understanding the speaker and, and its requirement, because there's different designs, there's different ways of producing bass in a speaker. I think that's the main thing that causes room issue. Um, and what I've got done, I've, I've gathered together a few different designs that were sort of around the shop. The drawers kind of different to each other, just to explain what's, what each sort of design type needs in a room or you know, what you can and can't do with them really, because it, it, there are certain speakers that just won't work in certain rooms and you know, you'd need a certain different type of speaker. So hopefully this will sort of explain a little bit. I've got a bit of a diverse selection really. Um, there's one that's standing out that I know you're looking at. Um, these are to my workshop, the Spare Old Acoustic Research Air 18 S's, which I love, I love these speakers, and I, my first, probably because it's my first pair of speakers. Um, not this pair, I've had many pair. People, people know about my love of Air 18s, and I've had quite a few people turning up. Um, so I've got something for you, and it's a pair of Air 18s, so I've probably got three, three, four pairs at the moment. Uh, using the workshop, um, love them, really. Uh, we've got Heat Acoustics SX, SX3s, uh, Fine Audio 1.5, F1.5s, uh, which are gorgeous. Um, new Toyota, uh, Affidian Mambo, the new version. This is the, uh, the, I don't know if you remember the original version, it had like six base units on it. Um, and we've got Riga RX3 at the end. Now, if you go back in time, hence AO8 teams, Pretty much all speakers below a certain size, well, most speakers really were, were sealed box. Uh, and what you tend to find with this, what you tend to find with sealed box speakers is that they, they, you tend to have a bigger driver. This is an 8 inch driver. An 8 inch driver was kind of where you started in speakers from you know, late 70s, early 80s, you know, that sort of period. I mean, these were the budget model in the range. There was, more, there was one model below, but it still, still had a, the AR8 still had an 8 inch driver. And they had 28, 30, I think 38 you went to a 10 inch driver. And now, now you don't see speakers with 8 inch drivers nowadays unless, you can, unless you're getting into quite big, quite big money, quite exotic stuff really. Um, 4, 5, 6 is more common, 6 is quite rare. Um, now the reason you need a bigger driver than this, I mean if you look at the cabinet it's actually very narrow. It's the actual volume of the cabinet uh, is quite low, even though it looks quite big, but fashion sort of took over and people didn't want big chunky looking speakers anymore so the designers were sort of almost forced to go to a smaller driver so if you look at things like the little neats there probably about four ish four and a half inch driver might be wrong might be five uh, but anyway, smaller driver um tend to be longer throw but to get an actual to get any sort of deeper end base out of a smaller driver like that you're not going to do it in a seal box so the next, to create more bass, the best way to do it really, as with this, is to put a port on. So the SX3 is a rear ported design. Fair enough, okay, so you've got a smaller driver, a smaller frontage, so that's, people are happier, people are happier sort of decor wise, because it's a small frontage speaker, it doesn't, I mean obviously it's deeper, but that depth isn't as visual as the width, so, like I said, fashion dictated that this is the direction things are going in. Um, the problem between this and this is, um, Sealed box, because the driver is working in, into a sealed enclosure, it doesn't have an awful lot of freedom. It's pushing against the force of the air pressure inside. And actually, the way to improve these, and it improves them a lot actually, is if you actually seal the drivers properly. And put sealant around the out, take the driver out, put sealant around, stick them back in again. And seal any, anywhere where there might be air escape. And the difference you'll make to a pair of sealed boxes is, is fantastic. It really improves them. Um, the benefit of that air pressure is it, it, it helps power handling, it makes them much more robust, but it actually makes it quite difficult for them to produce lower end bass. So the, the way to increase the bass of a speaker is to move it close to a wall, a back wall. Um, so all the design, all, all the sort of peer group of this speaker, like CAF coders and CAF um, they put, might have been put it. All the sort of speakers like this anyway, were designed to go really close up to a wall. But, saying that, if you drive things like this really, really hard, I mean, I used to have, I, I converted mine so you could, you could, have, you could feed the, the bass and the treble separately, and I had four big monoblock power amps driving a pair of these, 
they would work it away from the wall, but because I had so much current drive, uh, it would work. But in, in most situations, these are designed to go against a wall. Ported designs, like the, like the flat SX3 needs, um, because the base is they're actually sort of, you've got a certain amount of base output out of the port. If that's too close to a wall, you get the same effect as, um, so you, sometimes you get it with, with like room acoustics where you'll get a doubling up or an, uh, whatever behind the speaker. So you, you sort of need to have a, a nice gap between to let the port work. Otherwise, it's, you, you get sort of, um, sort of a chuffing effect. It's sort of, you get a sudden a big hump in the base. Rear ported speaker is probably the most difficult to get right, and normally things like SX, even SXCs, little speakers like this, probably need about three feet behind them just to let the port work. Uh, but having the port means that it's not got the air pressure to fight against. It can the, the base unit can move more freely, and it uses the port to produce the bass. Um, not as good power handling, and not as easy to place. Really, really, these are probably the most difficult to place in a lot of ways. You need you know very good stand and. Yeah, well acted to a room. Sometimes you get away with it, actually. So if, if, it depends on your room acoustics. Sometimes you might, if you've got a solid floor, really solid walls, um, and a fairly dead acoustic, you can quite often get away with them quite close in, but you'll probably never be able to get these closer than about foot 18 inches to a wall, really, without the bass going going horrible, really going really and, and, and overwhelming the mid band. Um, the next step after this, well, I'll probably jump to these actually. Neat iotas are kind of a mixture of, of these two. The top end is sealed, so this is basically a, an iota, standard iota speaker, which I did a review on a while back. Little red ones, sort of a little tiny little speaker, which is ported. But the in, the top end of this is an iota, but it's sealed, and it it sort of reinforces the base with another driver. So there's actually another driver on the bottom, which is then ported. So question there is how do you position these because it's ported and it's sealed so which which part are you trying to make it work actually these these work close to a wall and even though they're ported at the back I think the, the porting is so cleverly done and um, the tune is tuned so well that actually you can actually sit these very very close in and they do work quite well fully for my my own my own home took some of these home and I couldn't make them work close in I had to move them out but normally in here actually they, they work quite close into the walls so um, that's probably down to the seal, the seal that um, the seal top end because all your mid, mid band is is sealed, so this, this clouding of the base doesn't tend to happen as much. Um, another step, I'm going to miss these for a minute. Another step is Ophidians. Now these are ported, but it's quite a clever porting arrangement on these. Um, and, and for the life of me, I can't remember what they call them. Aeroflex, Aeroflex, that's what they call it. That's a little grill down here. Now that's what they call Aeroflex port, I think. Flex port? That's, yeah. The word Aeroflex comes into it anyway. And um, this is a, is a tuned port. It's, it's, it is a port, but it's sort of controlling the airflow. And there's, they say, minimal airflow out of that. Now these are okay, quite close in, even though they're quite a big floor standard. Um, you, can, you can generally have these quite close in. But because they're quite cleverly designed, you can, if you want to improve your sound stage, you can move them out, and the, 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 the different differential in the bass isn't as big as it would be with something like this. Um, really like these actually. Gareth, who designs these, is a genius. It's, I, don't, I don't know how it's, the little mini modes that they they make. Um, probably our best selling, but the original mini modes, one of our best selling speakers, tiny thing. It's literally you can just imagine the top of that, but not quite as wide. Fabulous things, you know, absolutely fabulous. Um, made in not far from here, actually made on the Wirral, which is up sort of on the little bit of land that comes out under Liverpool and above Wales. Um, but yeah, it's a clever, clever guy actually. Nicely made, great sound. Um, and on the this end we've got the RX3 Regas. Now they're front ported, the ports down the front, down front of there. Now these, because the port is forwards, can go quite close into a wall. Um, again, if they're driven if you put big amps on them, quite often you can you can move them out and play around and get it and play with imagery and things like that. Because you draw back a bit close into a wall, it does tend to flatten the image, it, sort of psychologically, because the speakers are kind of more in line with the wall. You, you, your mind almost stops the image at the wall, whereas if you move them out, you get a much more 3D sort of effect. Um, I've used, I'm actually my son's got a pair of these, I've used these at home, and 
wear out into a room and you, you get a lovely big natural image of them. If you, if you drive them hard, well, not hard, but drive them on something like, a, like an LXR or something upwards, um, they're, not, they're not as fussy about being closed in. Uh, now we come to these. Now this is quite clever. Um, little, these are gorgeous. Um, there's quite a few. These aren't the first speakers to use this system. Um, first time I saw it was in um, QDOS speakers, which I do as well. And the base is the base. There is a base port, but it's not at the front and it's not at the back. It's all around. Um, the little slot here. Um, inside, there's a sort of a flare. There's a port that comes down, and the, the base is flared upwards into a point in a sort of a um, it's con yeah, conical is a word, yeah, in a, into a sort of conical shape. So the base comes out of the port, hits the cone, and flares in all directions. So it's not front or rear ports, it just sort of basically lets the, the, the base energy out in all directions. These don't seem to be particularly fussy about placement at all, a bit like the QDOSs and uh, some of the other neat, the, the neat, mot um, neat motives. Neat motives. Uh, so the other, the other model of these in, the neat motives, have a, a, a similar idea. Their speakers are slightly canted back and the port fires straight down and then there's a little outlet at the front of the thing. So it's kind of a front port, but it sort of, it, it does escape in all directions as well. And those are very easy to place. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really clever way of doing it. It's, it's all the fine audios are like that. The, um, it's called, the, yeah, the big 502s, all, all of them have this sort of flared affair and they're very, very easy to position. Um, so yeah, that's a sort of range of speakers. I um, can't think there's any others. So basically, you know, your basic rules are if it's sealed box, close to a wall, if it's rear ported, you need, you need a good distance behind. Front ported, closer in, but even with front ports, it's a little bit fussy back to being too close in. Um, if it's something like the, like, um, the Affidians, which has got a control port or transmission line as well, you don't see transmission line much now, but transmission line could be quite close in because there wasn't actually that much energy out of the port, but it was releasing, it was sort of releasing pressure, but it wasn't push, pushing too much sound out of it. And uh, things like old IMFs, you could use those quite close into the wall, and they were, you know, they're huge, great 15 inch drivers, and, but they could be quite close in with uh, the transmission line, things at the back there. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, I mean, like I said, the next one is just going to be showing how to set up and how to position and, and, and different ways of, of sort of listening to music and moving them around and how, how to sort of slowly zero in on that point where they, they work, work the best. Because speakers tend to have, I am not when you're setting a speaker up, they'll sound okay and okay, and then all of a sudden it's like, it sort of just all clicks and it works. But it's, it's just learning how to zero in on that point where everything just works. So that's going to be, that's going to be the next video, which I will... Maybe a few days again, uh, a few things going on at the moment, including um, things at home that are getting a bit complicated. So um, I'm going to leave it there with these. Um, I've got to go and put all these away again, and now I've got to try and see if I can actually stand up because my legs have gone dead completely, so I don't know how I'm going to move. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, give us a like or subscribe if you can. The subscription would be brilliant. We're still, again, uh, rising rapidly on the subscription. So, uh, and Get, keep getting really nice comments as well which is good so uh, thank you thanks everybody for that it's been really really warms my heart that it's really nice um so yeah so i'll be um part three soon and uh, see, see you then thank you